This is Manchester United versus Liverpool. Oh, it's always a good one. Well, no, not necessarily always a good no, game. It's a massive but it's always the one that maybe this part of it is the most exciting bit. <laughs> yeah. But this time around, it's so unpredictable because you know, Liverpool get the, the win in midweek. They get the 3-2 the victory against Atletico Madrid in Madrid. Manchester United come from 2-0 down to beat Atalanta 3-2. They, it feels as though the perception of both sides is, is very different at the moment. But what we've seen is they can both do it, but equally, they're both vulnerable. They, anything could happen in this game. Um, yeah, but I think Liverpool are, are quite... They're just purring along and we know what they're doing. We know, we know exactly what we're doing. The problem that you have with Man United is that we don't know what they're doing. We don't know what Man United is going to turn up. But this up. game coming up... This game coming means up... ...means that we could see them at, at this you, level. You could do, and yeah, but... You know, as, as a Man United fan, you'd like to be going in. If you're a Liverpool fan, you know how you're going in. You know what's happening. Mo Salah's playing well. They're playing the stuff. They're doing their... You know, it's, it's what Liverpool do. Man United are going in. They don't know who's going to be in the midfield. You know what I mean? You, 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 don't, know, you don't know what's going to happen. You're hoping that Man United will put in the performance like they did in the second half against Atalanta um, with, with Fred and McTominay. You know, there's a two in a 4-2-4. In a four, two, four, with like massive amount of space in between um, the defenders and the midfield, and I mean the, def the midfield and the forwards, and you're thinking, how are they supposed to like support them? How are they supposed to keep it going? And then you look at Liverpool, who are the, the opposite in respects of attacking a Man United side. That if they leave spaces like that, it's gonna be really. I don't care what anyone says about how they can lift themselves against Liverpool. I just don't know if they're gonna get that kind of opportunity again. Liverpool will be ruthless. Yes. Having said that, we saw that, and again, the game in, in Europe is probably the best example of this. The fact Liverpool played with pretty much their, their first choice mm. back four, Matic partnering Van Dijk, and then obviously the, yeah. the two fullbacks. But they still conceded two goals and, and didn't look defensively strong in that game. Either. Possibly the worst game I've seen Van Dijk play that. Um, I think he got caught out. Griezmann, good movement. You know, they were defending the halfway line, they get long balls played over the top. And they were struggling, him and Matip. So, you know, Man United's threat is when a team come onto them. I think Liverpool will be coming onto them. They've shown that they can pull some difficult results out when they need to against Man City a couple of times last year. You know, when Oli absolutely needs a result, he seems to find one. Um, I don't know how, um, but it seems like the individual unbelievable players. The individuals turn up, you know, and none more so than than the man who scores a winner in. Late on again last night, Ronaldo. You know, uh, I think he's he will not leave him out again. You know, I think Ronaldo will play until he tells him he needs a rest. Um, so he will play. You can't rule out him turning up in this big game. But I agree with Wrighty. I think that on the face of it, they're tailor made for for Liverpool. You know, I think Liverpool Liverpool have too much attacking threat. I'm not sure Man United are too defensively solid at the moment. And certainly in the midfield area, there's a gaping holes. You know, there, there's no cohesion there. When one goes to press, he goes in isolation. I'm just not sure they're going together. The principles of what Ollie's telling them, they're just not listening to or they're not understanding. Um, and at the moment, I just think, listen, the results wise, yes, it was a great result last night. But if that was Liverpool last night, you know, forget Liverpool's result against Atletico Madrid. Even though that was a decent result, I think that flattered them a little bit. Um, even when they go down to 10 men, Atletico. But I just think that Atlanta, Liverpool would have been yeah. out of sight last night. Could have scored more Atlanta, made so many chances. Out of sight. Yes, Liverpool Atlanta. would have yeah. been three or four up by half time, and the game's gone then, not two. And yeah, I, and I know we, look, we should take this over longer term, but I just keep look, thinking about those, those two matches over a couple of nights in which Manchester United got quite a bit of joy down the left hand mm. side, which is where Liverpool were vulnerable mm. against Atletico Madrid and, and mm. looked as though they, they were getting between. Trent Alexander-Arnold and, and Matip and, and using that space really well. I, so I, I look at them and I think some of their... Where, where the teams are strong is where the other teams are weak. weak. There is a, there's a, almost like a, a parallel between the two. Yeah, there is, but... I, I think just... parallel's the wrong word, but you understand. <laughs> <what I'm trying. laughs> I do understand what you're trying to say. I just can't get away from two very basic facts, was that United have kept one clean sheet in their last 20 matches. Wow. And that, to me, says that there is something from a coaching perspective, fundamentally wrong yeah. with that team. You look at Liverpool, Salah, 12 games so far this season. Um, sorry, overall, Liverpool, mm -hmm. 12 games this season, nine wins, but Salah now 12 goals so far this season, can't stop scoring. 
Listen, yes, they played badly against Atletico, but Atletico are a superior team to this Manchester United. They're better coach. We know that their, their organisation ability at the back is superior to United. They're freshened up, uh, up front as well. With Griezmann coming back to the football club, Suarez wasn't even on the pitch when they were running riot in that final third against Manchester United. Can't see that United are going to have the ability to attack when they're going to have so much to defend against yeah. on Sunday. And that, for me, is the reason why I can see Liverpool starting fast, getting in their faces, pressuring that defence. No Varane, no organisation between the two. I remember speaking to Darren Bent, who's, mm. who's been on here before. He, he said to me, when you're a striker, what you're looking for is... A, a conversation between the two centre halves. You're looking for an understanding. If there isn't any cohesion, you know that you've got an opportunity to get in between them. I can see uh, Firmino, Mane, Salah managing to take advantage of the lack of communication between the two centre halves or any of the back four um, mm. uh, in, in the same way that you probably would. Yeah. So for my money, I cannot see anything. The only thing that I think could go wrong is that for, for Liverpool, from a Liverpool perspective, is if they show United too much respect. But if they don't do that, I think Liverpool will win this game convincingly. I just, the, the, the thing with it is, is, is we, we've been here with, um, with Ole and Man United. And when you look at the players that he's got at his disposal, you can see why all of a sudden they'll play like they do in the second half, because those players are... Well, Pogba and Cavani were on the pitch well, on the, in the in the second yeah, half. Brought them yeah, yeah, which which you find in a game like that, you 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 can't understand why Pogba doesn't start or why he doesn't play a team where it is going to be maybe what? with an eye on Sunday. Maybe potentially. with an eye, yeah, but at the same time, that was a big game last for win. Man United. Last win last night. Wasn't yeah, it? it was a it's a they massive can't game. Can't afford to do that, and there's mm. only so many times Ronaldo can dig them out of a hole. Yeah. Eventually, they're going to get to a point where they're. Progress to the knockout stages is going to depend on getting a result. Can they really afford to give the opposition team a two-goal start, a one-goal start mm. in a situation like that, or in a cup game where they've got to progress? It, you, you cannot keep doing that when you're a club the size of Man United. And Solskjaer can't really see that he has any truck with anybody who says, when I look at your team, they're a side dependent on moments. They're looking mm. for a player to dig them out of a hole, and invariably it's Ronaldo, but your luck will mm. run out eventually. And yet, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's record, as you said, this, this has been going on for a while. People yeah. say Manchester United just can't continue like this. They can't. But he has a 55.2% mm. win percent yeah. percentage. And yes, out of the 163 games, there are 170 mm. goals against. But if you're scoring over 300, you know, if you're scoring yeah. practically two goals a game, you're, you're going to come out on top. And it compares yeah. really favourably. To, to other managers who've come in since Sir Alex Ferguson. It's a tough long yeah. yeah, but Kels, we're talking about we are talking about Man United and we're we're talking about the statistics and what what he what he's done there. But we're still talking about what's their system. We're still talking about. But if you know, they're winning how, what, games, but they're not that, winning trophies. That is the key. That's what it will come down to. I mean, to, we're Kels. judging him against Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp. Let's put his record up against them and see where we are. Where's the tr where we couldn't put a um, trophy column the club in there. Up with it them. wasn't worth putting it in because zero trophies in three years. Any other manager apart from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer without winning a trophy at Manchester United, get they get rid of him. I listen to people talking about he steadied the ship. He steadied what ship? A ship what Jose Mourinho left them three trophies. I don't think they're steady in a ship. I think they're a rudderless, rudderless ship at the moment. I think that's what they are. They've got world class players. They give him Varane. They give him Sancho. They give him the king. They've all backed there now. Now he has to win. Unless he wins this year, surely they're going to call time on his, on his time there. We're not seeing any progress. I'm, it's not about formations. It's not about one pivot in midfield or two pivots in midfield. It's about the principles of what he's coaching them on the training pitch. Or Kieran McKenna, whoever, or Mike Phelan, whoever's taking the session, Michael Carrick, they're not picking up the information. They look like they're going in fits and starts. No cohesion. They're Moments. not a team. They are team, they're a group of individuals. And when you get, you're going to win football matches because you've got world-class stars. But can you win trophies? No, not unless you glue them together. But they don't need to long... I mean, as you said, they will by the end of the season. This weekend, all they need to do is beat Liverpool. So looking ahead to this game, mm -hmm. look at the match-up between the two squads, between the two starting 11s. 
who comes out on top? Who who's would you say? Who would you say has the stronger squad? Take take aside performances. Look yeah. at, at the talent. Uh, well, I mean, certainly, Man United is more expensive. Yeah, are we are we putting the the managers in the squad? We no. have to. Well, we have to because okay, well, they're the so one, they're one the one who are driving the bus. <laughs> yeah. For me, at the wheel, they're the ones at the wheel. <laughs> because of Jurgen Klopp, I have to say Liverpool. I think Jurgen Klopp managing Man United, they win the game. Just, it was a pure, just based on the, mm. the amount of talent, because the next question was going to be who's getting the most out of their, their squad oh. compared to, to Klopp and, and Solskjaer. Yeah. And, and just, just a, sort of, a, a sort of bare analysis mm. of the players, where the, the balance of talent is. Yeah, but you look at Man United. Because, Man United. because you look at yeah. Pogba yeah. and Ronaldo That's what I'm saying. and Sancho. Yeah. Harry an Maguire, one of the most expensive defenders in, in the world as well. Yeah. Amazing, and we can see... The fact that Man United can all of a sudden they, they'll just wipe you wipe the floor with you because of the players they've got. Yeah. Um, you look at Liverpool's team and they are a team with great individuals as well. But like um, you, you look at Man United and you know Tim said it there with Klopp at the Man United helm, with, you do feel that they're probably doing better. But how they're playing right now, you probably kind of like go for Liverpool simply because they, they just feel like we know what you're going to get. Mo Salah might score because he's been mm. scoring. They're going to be solid. You know, Mane's going to do what he does. You know, you're hoping, Man United, in the end, that maybe Ronaldo scores the winner because you don't know, like us sitting here right now, we don't know how they're going to set up and that, but we know one thing can happen at Man United is that if it's coming to the death, Ronaldo can score a winner. It is such an intriguing game. It always is. Manchester United against Liverpool and sometimes the, the performances haven't quite reached the heights of the hype in the past. But I think this one, you've got some of the best players in the world on show. It's at Old Trafford. It's back in front of fans. This could be huge. Enjoy it this weekend. Thank you very much uh, to Darren and to Tim for joining us. Same time next week? Yeah, because I can't wait. You're not good pretending and you're then you're no, not, not going to show up next week. No, I'm going to be here. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>